This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today, Arch replaces sport at Dunedin's Morifem Arena as the country's largest art exhibition hits the town. Bees are being encouraged to hang out at an Invercargill garden to help pollinate flowers. And art lovers are in for a real treat at Otago Polytechnic this weekend as the annual site exhibition takes place. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Daryl Bazer. Art is replacing sport at Dunedin's Morifem Arena for a few days as the Dunedin Art Show shows off its wares. Many artistic styles line temporary walls with organisers inviting spectators to check out a myriad of work on offer. The Moore FM Arena is transformed from a hoop shooting venue to an extensive art gallery, hosting the biggest art exhibition in New Zealand this year. This is the largest art show in New Zealand this year in Dunedin. I don't think there's been any other art shows like this that have run. So we are the only one. Kate Morrison says the Dunedin Art Show hosts works from hundreds of artists from across the country. Some of the artists have travelled to Dunedin with the event to show their works in person. One of those is New Plymouth's Volker Harvikost, who constructs art from discarded bread tags. In my eyes, the most unnecessary part in the world, and so I recycle it. That means that all the bread tags I'm working with are have been through Kiwi families, have been collected by fundraising activities or by single persons just not in the mood to throw it away and uh, so they end up at my place and I clean them, bend them back and uh, sort the colours and the different shapes they have and yeah, start to do my art. It's kind of my paint if you want it, like that. The largest of his pieces has around 9,000 bread tags in it. He's proud of his adopted home of New Zealand, having elected three women to the role of Prime Minister. So much so, he's immortalised their signatures in a triptych. So we are world leading uh, through the fact that we have had three Prime Ministers within the last two and a half decades. And I just wanted to celebrate that and uh, so I did their signatures and uh, yeah, um, that's it. Not more, not less. <laughs> this series he calls Self Portraits. The opening night event sold out, but organisers are welcoming people to set some time aside on Friday and over the weekend to pop in and have a look around. And we do have a lot of artists here that have gone overseas and, you know, gone to Hong Kong, they go and show in Australia, they show in England and New York. They're not, they are New Zealand artists, but New Zealand art is everywhere and I think we'll find there's quite a high calibre of work here. The Dunedin Art Show is on at the Edgar Centre on Friday, Saturday and Sunday. In Dunedin, the South today. The fire danger is set to increase across Otago this weekend with forecast high winds expected to hit the area. Fire and Emergency is asking people not to light any fires outdoors. A front is expected to pass through central Otago from today until Saturday, bringing strong northwesterlies. It's likely to push the fire danger up in central Otago to very high. Strong winds are also forecast for coastal Otago. People are also encouraged to be cautious carrying out any, acti any activities which may, may create sparks such as mowing grass, or having barbecues. Hives of urban bees are already bringing benefits to an Invercargill garden. This week the Southland Bee Society set up a new apiary in Falster Gardens in the hope the fairy flyers will add to their floral success. Looking a bit like space suited visitors, members of the Southland Bee Society explore the floral highlights of Invercargill's Falster Gardens, owned by Trevor Huggins, who says his flowering trees such as Golden Laburnum are flourishing since a number of beehives were set up in the garden about four years ago. Over the, the past few years since Geoffrey's had his bees here, the gardens have just flourished even better. Um, from having them here, 
the plants are seeded more um, and it's been um, how would you say sort of quite changing as far as the garden goes by having these um, critters about. Southland Bee Society Chairman Jeff Scott has been looking after the hives and he says the range of plants with different flowering times makes it an ideal place for bees. Every week of the year there's something flowering for the bees so it's a a hand-in-hand -hand relationship and the, um, this place has boomed. The more bees we're putting here, the better everything's gone, you know. So, um, and we w both work well together. So, And this was a really good place for breeding bees as well, with having that stuff all year round. And it's also an ideal place for members of the Southland Bee Society to visit, as they now meet at nearby Kennington Hall. So tonight we've brought them here for a, a welcome barbecue, to look at the hives, how to set up the site, um, how the health and safety side of it, um, what the landowner expects, how you can access the hive all year round, um, and things like that. And in Vicargill, the South today. Six previously unmarked graves have already been discovered at the historic Drybread Cemetery, only days into a month-long archaeology project. Four of the graves were discovered along a back fence of the cemetery, where there were no known graves. Delicate Archaeological work is revealing evidence of coffins in at least two of the graves. One coffin has, a very ornate, has very ornate coffin pieces which have completely rusted away, while the, other cover, while the other coffin was covered in black fabric. This is similar to styles found during previous research dating from the late 19th century. Otago Polytechnic's School of Art has turned into a massive art gallery as the institution holds its annual end of the year exhibition. The head of the School of Art says she's proud of all of her students' work and says they can all go on to careers in the field as they develop their own practice. From massive shears to light shining through prints on material and a combination of painting and embroidery with its own soundtrack, there's an outstanding collection of vibrant artistic styles at every turn at Otago Polytechnic. Well, site's interesting because what it is, is it's the um, final, pro it's the product of a combination of an exhibition and an examination process. So, in a sense, it's curated by the students themselves. They put their work up for examination and in association with the works you see, they will have stood explained their work to an external examiner and their internal examiner and they would have shown documentation. School of Art Head of School Bridie Loney says like with other facets of society, COVID-19 had a profound effect on students but she says they've risen to the challenge exceeding expectations. First of all I want to say that this is of the same if not better quality as a normal year which in my estimation means that it is 20% better than any other year we've ever had. She says students couldn't access their workspaces and ongoing projects for two months of the lockdown. Lodi says the graduates work is of a high enough standard to be placed in any gallery. Each student has taken risks in different ways, um, experimented in their own ways. So what you have is quite clear, different idiosyncratic voices, and you also have technical skills. Following a trail of flyers, you end up in a room well off the beaten path. It's the campaign headquarters of the Soap Party, whose election campaign failed miserably. The multimedia installation is the work of Sam, Samantha Mitchell, and comprises her final year graduate piece. Loney says art school graduates acquire a host of skills during their study. It might take 10 years to get to become a um, self-supporting artist. This is known across the profession. They also graduate with a whole lot of transferable skills. So they will tend to work in self-employment, if you like, as artists developing their skills. They will work um, in all sorts of other areas. Site opens tonight and runs over Saturday and Sunday at the Dunedin School of Art. In Dunedin, the South today. And still to come on the South today, a new institute aimed at encouraging entrepreneurship is set to open next year, and Alexandra is the place to be if you want your household items repaired. See you after the break.
Global Menswear. We're back in George Street on the corner of Hanover Street. Come and check out our big store. It's a big space full of bargains. Now look at these shirts. There's shirts for everybody here. Look at these merino pullovers. Stacks of moleskins. Literally tons of trousers. Check out these big racks of sports jackets. Beautiful. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. So come and check out Alex Campbell Menswear. We're back on George Street in the old ANZ building. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. You've seen us in the street, now find us online. Check out shopon.org.nz. We have all sorts of treasures, from retro and vintage clothing to antiques, homewares and accessories. New items added every week. We're open 24-7. No mai no. Welcome back. A new school focused on entrepreneurship and leadership is set to open in Queenstown next year. The Liger Leadership Academy was unveiled publicly to prospective parents and pupil to parents of prospective pupils at Millbrook Resort. It was drinks and nibbles at Millbrook Resort earlier this week for Queenstown parents hoping for their children to excel academically and possibly through a new education program called LIGO Leadership. The couple behind a new school say their approach to teaching is about preparing young people for a rapidly changing world. We realised that we needed to reinvent education for the 21st century. In fact, there's, a, there's an urgent global need to do this. And so we created the Liger Academy as a response to focus education in a direction that can help young people today be prepared for a future that is completely uncertain. The couple opened a pilot academy in Cambodia eight years ago, with almost half the school's graduates winning full scholarships to Ivy League universities in the USA. And Guile says the Academy is all about teaching young people how to maximise their potential through an international award-winning curriculum as well as a positive culture in the classroom. Just as important is the culture in which the students learn. Um, and that culture is defined uh, by kindness and consideration, collaboration, competition, uh, an understanding of risk and how to manage it, no stigma for failure, and lots and lots of fun. The first step in launching the school is to be with the Liger Discovery Club, a one day a week program aimed at intermediate age pupils to give them a taste of the Liger methods. You can't just open the door and turn on the lights and say, okay, off we go. You have to build the culture. And so to build the culture, we're starting with the Liger Discovery Club. And that will be an introduction to our methods and how we go about learning, a one day a week program. And that will kind of get the young people into the mindset that will enable them to step into Liger Academy on a full time basis. It's hoped the school will eventually cater to full time high school pupils. In Queenstown, 
the South today. The Alexandra Community Centre has been busy with people repairing household items. Avoiding the unnecessary discarding of broken items was the aim of the Waste Busters Repair Revolution. Getting more use out of old items was the focus on Sunday as Waste Busters Repair Revolution came to Alexandra. Project manager Sophie Ward said the aim was to return to the idea of repairing instead of throwing things away. Part of the repair revolution is we have volunteer fixers who, who give their time to come and, and share their skills but also pass on that repair knowledge. So whether that's intergenerational or people are just remembering how to do things or learning how to, you know, um, fix their household items, the idea is that it's skill sharing and you know creating those networks in the community as well. Today in Alexandria we've got fixers who are doing clothing and textiles, uh, we have jewellery repair, we have ceramics repair, we have bike mechanics, uh, an electrician, some furniture repair going on, so we've got about 15 to 16 volunteers today. The social enterprise was celebrating 20 years of recycling and minimising waste. When we started 20 years ago, it was almost a, a fringe group. A fringe, the ideas were quite out there around resource management and waste management and recycling, but more and more we've seen that that's just become the mainstream. So I think the thing now is, you know, where else are we heading? Like, where can Waste Busters lead us into the future? You know, zero waste, that's where we're heading. So um, it's very exciting, and I think the fact that we're still here after 20 years says a lot, you know about how successful we are and, and how the public has come along for that, you know, that journey. They've reached the same understanding of run waste management that we have. In Alexandra for the South Today. And after the break on the South Today, with Christmas on the horizon, some Dunedin youngsters are honing their letter writing skills and we have your weekend weather. See you soon. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Step into Shop on Carol and discover a shop full of treasures. We have a fantastic range of vintage and retro clothes, upmarket clothing labels, collectible items, beautiful jewellery, quality linen and the best range of vintage haberdashery. Hi, Al Campbell Menswear. We're back in George Street, on the corner of Hanover Street. Come and check out our big store. It's a big space, full of bargains. Now look at these shirts. There's shirts for everybody here. Look at these merino pullovers. Stacks of moleskins. Literally tons of trousers. Check out these big racks of sports jackets. Beautiful. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. So come and check out Alex Campbell Menswear. We're back on George Street in the old ANZ building. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ah, TV, our favourite babysitter. But it can be tough keeping up with what our Tamariki are watching. Uh, luckily, the Broadcasting Standards Authority has made some smart changes to the classification labels. Ooh! Plus changes to the time of day certain rated shows will air and awesome new parental lock features, meaning your babysitter's job is safe. Find out more at safeviewing.co.nz. Thanks for staying with us. With Christmas rapidly approaching, some Dunedin youngsters are improving their ability to write and spell by composing a letter to Santa Claus. Carisbrook school pupils have also been telling the man with the red robes what good things they've done this year. These youngsters at Carisbrook school have been improving their writing and spelling by sending a letter to Santa Claus. We're writing a letter to Santa Claus and we're starting our letter by explaining what we've been doing to help at home, letting Santa know how good we've been and then we're going to write down what we would like from Santa Claus before we sign our letters off. Yeah. New Zealand Post endeavours to respond to all letters addressed to Santa Claus that arrive before the 8th of December and those sent as online messages before the 23rd of December. The letters from Carisbrook school pupils include many accounts of having made their bed and tidied their bedroom. I write, dear Santa, I like to help my mum and I tidy up my bed. Well, I cleaned my room. I cleaned my room last night, the whole room. Letters to Santa Claus are free to post too. Santa Claus, Care of Santa's Workshop, North Pole, Postcode 0001. In Dunedin, the South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. Art replaces sport at Dunedin's Moritim Arena as the country's largest art exhibition hits town, bringing art from around the country. Bees are being encouraged to hang out at an Invercargill garden to help pollinate flowers, flying a short distance from the recently moved hives. And art lovers are in for a real treat at Otago Polytechnic this weekend at the annual site exhibition showcasing students' work. Time now for a look at what's happening in tomorrow's Otago Daily Times, the big Saturday rig. Welcome Mr Craig Page. Hey Daryl. A uh, big day uh, for Dunedin train buffs um, today with a confirmation from the council that they're, they're going to dust off Dunedin railway locomotives and carriages for a summer of rail in the city. Um, it's going to provide a limited Sunday service out of Dunedin from the end of December uh, through to end of March. Um, return trips to Hinden and another return trip to Seacliff uh, each Sunday. Um, sort of COVID put an end to the Torrey Gorge Railway, as you can well imagine, um, once the overseas tourists uh, dried up. They, they, I think they accounted for something like 80% of passengers on that, on that train service. Um, but Mayor Aaron Hawkins said that there's been a lot of, um, lot of interest and a lot of pressure, I guess, going on the, on the council for a return to some sort of train service in the city. Um, so yeah, this is what they've decided to do and really saying if you're not going to use it then we, we won't continue with it. But however, if the interest is there they may provide more services as well. So yeah, I guess an opportunity there. A use it or lose it challenge. Yeah, typical, yeah that's, and that's what's going to have to happen. Um, and also news today that Deneen Railway Station is going to have a, a $1 million upgrade starting next week. So that's sort of snuck up on us. Um, significant works needed on the exterior and the roof of the building. Of course, it's a Category 1 listed building and uh, much photographed, of course, by our overseas tourists. So not a bad opportunity to do it. Um, the work, as I say, work starts next week. Hope to have it the first phase completed by mid-21. Uh, so, yeah, good to see that happening as well. Uh, nice story about the first cherries of the season, uh, starting to get out there as well. Of course, concerns about where they're going to find the workers to pick them. 
We talked to one Cromwell grower who's uh, diversifying, I guess you'd call it, this year, and he's encouraging a pick-your-own-approach from buyers, um, hoping that um, more local tourists coming from throughout the country will uh, decide to call in and pick their own cherries. So good opportunity there. Um, it's looking like a good season, but yeah, still too early to say. You never know what's around the corner weather-wise. Uh, weekend mix, um, something for those gamers out there, not me I have to say, something called a PlayStation 5 and an Xbox Series X has been released this week apparently. Um, so our gaming reviewers have uh, taken a closer look at them to see if uh, they're, they're worth all the hype I guess that we're hearing about them. Give me a good cricket bat any day of the week, Dad. <laughs> I heard the uh, PS5 is going to be back compatible but not so much. Is that right? Indeed. Uh, yeah, I can take your word for that. And uh, don't forget rugby tonight in Dunedin as well, Targa Northland uh, Championship semi-final. We'll have updates on our website throughout the night and a, a full wrap in tomorrow's ODT, along with plenty of other sport and lots of other reading. Nice, all that and very much more in tomorrow's Tom. big Saturday ODT. Time now for a look at the weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by Mole Map. Beginning with the southern view, flowers standing to attention as life whizzes by. Looking at the situation, a rapidly deepening low pressure system brings gales to southern New Zealand tomorrow with rain developing and colder temperatures. Starting off at the northwest of the South Island, mostly wet in Westport and Greymouth with 16 degrees for you both. And in the northeast, expect scattered cloud in Nelson with 22 degrees, at cloudy skies in Blenheim with also 22. In Canterbury you can expect cloudy skies and 21 degrees. For Kaikoura, a few clouds in Christchurch with 23 degrees and partially cloudy skies for 24 in Ashburton. In the southern towns, hold on to your hats down here with southwesterly gales and rain. 17 degrees in the Catlins, while Balclutha, Lumsden and Gore should all be one lower on 16. To the central lakes, strong southwesterlies and rain for most over here, 16 degrees in Wanaka and Queenstown, 18 in Alexandra, and 15 degrees in Tiano with gale force wind from the southwest and rain. In the northern towns, strong westerlies and cloud increasing with 23 degrees on the coast in Tiamaru and 22 with rain in Wamaru, 18 degrees in Twizel and Omarama where you're due for showers later. In the Dunedin, showers tonight with northwesterly winds, an overnight low of 12. Find it first tomorrow morning with sunny periods before a southerly change bring cold winds which lift a gale by evening, a high of 21 and a low of 8. Cloudy with showers for most of Sunday, but the weather clears late in the day, a high of 12 and a low of 7. In Vicargo, rain tonight with strong north northwesterlies, an overnight low of 11. Periods of rain going to showers in the afternoon, with cold southwesterlies, a high of 16, low of 8, showers clearing during the day on Sunday, with a high of 11 and a low of 6. Have a great weekend. Ka This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.